Here's my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. Current assignment. What assignment? Bess and I are flying to New Orleans for a long weekend of fabulous music, sightseeing, and food. Okay, so I'm also going to visit Ned's friend, Henry Bollet, but only as a favor to Ned. Apparently, Henry's uncle just died, and he had to go down there for a couple of weeks. Ned says Henry's a nice guy, but kind of a loner who might appreciate a little company. So, the first thing I'll do is leave Bess at our hotel in the French Quarter and take a cab out to the mansion where Henry's staying. Ned called him and said I'd be coming. But once that's done, it'll be lazy les bon temps brûlés. <laughs> the only bad news is the weather's not supposed to be that great this weekend. But what's a little stormy weather when you're in the heart of the Big Easy, right? Right. Anybody here? Hi, the door was open. It. Something that'll make you feel better. Drink it. Just a couple sips. Uh, okay. That's it. No offense, but yuck. Don't make her drink any of your weirdo concoctions. Then I really will have to take her to the emergency room. You just go back to your phone call and leave us be. Don't pay him any mind. Where am I? You're at Henry Bollet's house, dear. In the library. He and I carried you in here after I found you unconscious in the foyer. Why is it so dark in here? The electricity went out. Lightning must have struck a transformer somewhere. What happened? Can you remember? Well, the front door was open, so I walked in, and then I saw this... Well, I saw a skeleton. And then he saw me. And then the light started flickering. And he threw something at me that exploded. Oh, the smoke must have made me pass out. You saw a skeleton? I'm sure it was just someone, you know, wearing a costume or something. I'm Nancy Drew, by the way. I came to see Henry. So we surmised. I'm Renee Amand. I'm Bruno Bollet's housekeeper. That is, I was. This skeleton that attacked you? Perhaps we should call the police. No! No emergency room, no police. Things are complicated enough as it is. Henry's feeling a mite overwhelmed. Well, you are looking much better, so I'm gonna get back to my plant parting. You need anything? I'll be outside in the garden. I should call them and keep them on hold for five hours and see how they like it. a glass eye. Did Bruno Bollet wear one? Yep. Wore a glass eye for as long as I can remember. Had a whole collection of them. Like to wear a different color every day. So, Nancy, nice to meet you. 
Ned sent you here to check up on me, huh? Do you mind? Not really. Ned's a nice guy. I mean, I really don't know him that well, just from school. But when I mentioned that my only living relative just died, he was all like, Yeah? How you feeling, man? You doing okay? Wanna talk? Of course, I guess I do come across as a little needy sometimes. Were you very close to your uncle? Great uncle. Great uncle Bruno, and no, I wasn't. My parents died in a car crash when I was eight. Since I had no other relatives, he took me in. Or should I say he shipped me out? Boarding school, summer camp, military school, college. <laughs> he may have looked after me, but he never spent any time with me. I didn't know him at all. Yet you came all the way down here for the funeral? Not really. Great Uncle Bruno named me executor of his estate, which means I have to make sure all his bills are paid and debts taken care of so his assets can be distributed. Unfortunately, he couldn't have cared less about little things like keeping records or balancing checkbooks. Dealing with his creditors and their lawyers has been an absolute nightmare. But so, thanks for stopping by, Nancy. And now you can report back to Ned that I'm fine and go enjoy New Orleans. No, I can't. Not until I know who that skeleton man was and what he was doing here and why he knocked me out like that. Look, I can understand you're not wanting to call the police, but somebody should investigate. And since playing detective is kind of a hobby with me... No offense, but are you sure you didn't just pass out from the heat and humidity or something and dream that you saw the skeleton dude? I'm positive. Okay, look around all you want. But I should probably warn you, Uncle Bruno was into exotic pets. Didn't believe in cages, so he gave him the run of the place. And just because he's dead, doesn't mean they are. So if you're gonna go poking around, be careful.
Nancy? Hey, Ned. It's about time you called. Did you make it to New Orleans okay? Yep. Have you seen Henry? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure I like the way you said that. Is he okay? He's fine. Well, he's the executor of his great-uncle Bruno's estate, which he's not real happy about. But he and his great-uncle weren't that close, so he's not grief-stricken or anything. Well, then, are you okay? Other than being attacked on my way into Henry's house by a skeleton wearing a red ascot and getting knocked out by the smoke bomb he threw at me, I'm fine, too. What? Let's just say that I've stumbled onto a mystery, and I'm not leaving till I solve it. Why am I not surprised? Is Bess with you? No, I told her I'd meet her back at the hotel. So tell me about this skeleton man. Well, it was someone in a costume, obviously. He or she was leaning over something in the great room when I walked in and surprised them. So they threw a smoke bomb at you and ran? Yeah, they must have interrupted whatever they were doing. What were they leaning over? The scale model of a cemetery, near which I found a tracing of some kind of symbol. I'm thinking maybe Skeleton Man dropped it. Why did Henry's uncle have a scale model of a cemetery in his house? Good question. I should probably ask Henry. Good idea. I'm still trying to figure out how you got to be friends with Henry. Well, we're not best friends or anything. Heck, we're not really even friends. I just feel sorry for the guy. I mean, he never hangs out with anyone between classes. And when I'd heard there'd been a death in the family, I just wanted to make sure he was okay all by himself down there. Don't worry, he's fine. A little strange, maybe, but fine. That's good to hear. You know, you're a pretty nice guy. Yeah, I know. Nothing more to report. Keep me posted. You got that? Got it. Bye, Ned. Bye, Nance.
Yes? Is your great uncle's estate worth very much? I have no idea, nor will I until I get all his affairs settled. He was a dentist for most of his life, so he must have had some money squirreled away. As you can tell, he was darn good at squirreling away junk. Have you had any of his things appraised? Somebody from a curio shop came in and took a quick look around, but it wasn't anything formal. Why is there an empty frame in the gallery in the other room? Apparently someone stole the canvas. Rene says it disappeared sometime after Bruno died. Was it valuable? In a way. It was of my parents. I think it was painted in the garden out back. Rene doesn't like me. Wouldn't surprise me if she took it out of spite. I found this scrap of paper in the fireplace. Do you know anything about it? No. You always go digging around in people's fireplaces? Just looking for something that might tell me who that skeleton man was. Ah. Anything else? Why is there a model of a cemetery in the other room? Because Great Uncle Bruno used to oversee the cemetery next door. Made that scale model so he could keep track of where everything, or should I say, everyone, was. Crafted all those miniature crypts himself. And people think I'm weird. Do you know what this is? I found it in the other room. Looks to me like some kind of tracing. I was thinking that maybe my skeleton man left it behind. Well, I sure don't know anything about it. Anything else? I'll stop bugging you now. Whatever. Nancy, welcome to my little land and lit corner of the world. It's a little wet out here. I don't mind. No one should mind the rain. Without it, the end of the world would come much too soon. Did you and Henry have a nice chat? We talked. Henry's a very morose, very negative young man. Very cunning, too. In fact, I'm fairly certain that he's been selling off Dr. Bolet's belongings on the sly. What kind of belongings? Just little things, odds and ends, really. But the lawyers made it very clear that no assets were to be liquidated until all of Dr. Bolet's affairs are settled. According to Dr. Bolet's will, Henry is to get 30% of the estate. Dr. Bolet's physician, Gilbert Buford, gets 30%. Our Lady of Route 57 School of Dentistry and Cosmetology gets 30%. And I am to receive 10%. What was in that concoction you wanted me to drink after I got knocked out? Never you mind. It was just a little remedy I brewed up on the spot to help you feel better. If you don't like Henry that much, how come you're still here? I'm here because Dr. Bolet paid me in advance, and I always fulfill my obligations. Have you ever seen this before? I found it by that scale model of the cemetery that's inside the house. It's a mystery to me. I suggest you ask Henry. He leaves things lying around all the time. I guess he figures I won't notice amid all the other clutter. But I do. I notice everything. How else may I be of service to you? What can you tell me about the painting that's missing from the frame in the gallery? Very little, I'm afraid. I didn't notice the picture was gone until after the reception following Dr. Bolet's funeral. I cannot even tell you what it was a picture of. If you don't mind my asking, what's in that little pouch you wear around your neck? Things. Secret things. Things that give me special talents when special times demand them. People usually laugh when I say this. But this pouch is my connection to the energy that powers the universe. Oh. Well, at least you didn't laugh. Nice talking to you. One more thing. I, too, have seen the skeleton man. After Dr. Bolet passed that night, I saw him in the hallway. He was there, then he was gone. So you best be careful, Nancy Drew, because if it was Mr. Death, and I truly think it was, he's come back. Oh, <laughs> no.
That should keep you guys quiet for a while. If I need another loquat, I'll just come back. Hello again. Whose boat is tied up down there where the bayou comes up to the cemetery? Do you know? That would be my boat. Comes in very handy when I need to forage for certain swamp-dwelling plants. I'll leave you to your potting. Thanks for coming by.
All done. Check. Did that. Still have to do that. All done. Still have to do that. Did that. Can't check that off yet. Did that. All done. Still have to do that. If there's anything camouflaged in that design, I'm gonna need some paper. Hello again. Do you by any chance have some plain paper that I could use? I most certainly do, but it's up in my room, and I'm afraid I cannot retrieve it for you until I'm finished here. You get the sudden urge to draw a picture? Something like that. I know, I'll help you. That way you'll get done faster. Gracious, you are the picture of impatience, aren't you? Well, I appreciate the offer. But here, why don't you just take this instead? It's an extra key to my room. The paper's in a drawer in my nightstand. Just go on up and help yourself. But make sure you lock the door when you leave, you hear? You I trust. But Henry, him I do not. I really appreciate this. And long as you're going up there, my appetite could use a little placating. So I would be much obliged if you would bring me a candy bar from my nightstand. And take one for yourself while you're at it. One for Renee, and one for me. Yum. Gosh, these things are good.
You bring me that Coco Kringle bar like I asked? Right here. Bless you. I'm so hungry I could devour these plants I'm potting up, dirt and all. How else may I be of service to you? Those weird symbols on the wall in your room, do you know who painted them? I did. Fact of the matter is, there's a spirit living in that wall. A spirit? Got a voice that it sends shivers down the spine of Dracula himself. Used to hear it sometimes, in the dead of night, half talking, half whispering, saying this one word I never heard before, like it was from a language no one on earth spoke. And suddenly, I knew. The spirit was trying to cast a spell on me. So I got me a book and found out that by painting the word I heard on the wall, syllable by syllable, in hoodoo signs, I could counteract the word's power. And you know what? The spirit has not spoken that word or any other since. What was the word? Darling, a sack full of water moccasins couldn't get me to say that word out loud. Nor will I write it down, no sir. Not ever, ever, ever. I'll see you later. Come see me any time. This must be the painting that goes in that empty frame.
Yes? I'll stop bugging you now. Groovy. Hi, it's me. Hey, Nance. I just got back from shopping, which I am happy to report is fantastic here. So, what's going on with you? A lot. A lot is in a whole bunch of fun stuff? Let me start by telling you what happened when I arrived at Henry's house. I walked up to the front door and discovered it was open. So I walked in. You were knocked out by a skeleton wearing a red ascot? Someone dressed as a skeleton wearing a red ascot. Although the housekeeper here thinks it really was a skeleton, Mr. Death. But then, she's a little strange. You think it was a burglar? I'm not sure. I caught him or her sneaking around the scale model of a cemetery. And later, I found a tracing of something right by it. So if I could just figure out what it's a tracing of, and what, if anything, it has to do with that model cemetery, I might be able to figure out who Skeleton Man is. I know that tone of voice. You're not leaving there until you've done just that, are you? Oh, I also found some kind of receipt in the fireplace that may or may not be a clue. What's it a receipt for? That's what I need to find out. See, it's half burned up. All I can read is the receipt number and the name of the place it's from. Zeke's. Zeke's? You gotta be kidding me. Why? What do you mean? I mean, I'm sitting here on our balcony in the French Quarter looking down at a place across the street called Zeke's. That's great! So go over there and ask whoever's behind the counter what receipt number 21-3872 is for. You... you want me to snoop? I wouldn't call it snooping. Uh-uh, forget it. Not gonna do it. Best. I'm not good at that sneaking around stuff, Nancy. I get nervous, my tongue gets all knotted up, my palms sweat to say nothing of my armpits. Beth, receipt number 21-3872. Just go in and ask what it's for. No big deal. Maybe not for you. Beth, you can do it. Mm, this is not going to end well. I just know it. Okay, I'll call you as soon as it's over. I'll be waiting. Doing a little end of the day shopping, huh? See something you like? I like everything. That's what I want to hear. I'm Lamont. This is my place. So if you got any questions, I'm the guy to ask. Actually, I do have a question. Um, this friend of mine found the number of a receipt that came from this shop, and she asked me to ask you what the receipt is for. But if you're really busy, or you'd rather not, or it's against the rules. No problem. What's the number? Uh, 21-3872. 21-3872. Here we go. That ticket was for a large box of assorted unknown items I bought from Henry Beaulieu. And, uh, that's all I can tell you. Is something wrong? Look, I just don't want to make trouble for anyone, okay? Can you tell me what was in the box? It's still in the back room. I haven't had a chance to really go through it yet. Hey, is there something else I can help you with? Beads, hula dolls, old books. Got great deals on all of them. Is Henry Boulay a friend of yours? No, I met him at the reception at Bruno's house following the funeral. Gave Henry my card, said when he wanted to start liquidating, he should give me a call. Was Bruno a friend of yours? Way I hear it, Bruno Boulay didn't have any friends. Mm, but I wish he had been my friend. I mean... That house of his is filled with junk. He kept everything. For someone in my business, the place is knick-knack heaven. 
Seeing as this place is called Zeke's, and it's your place, shouldn't your name be Zeke? Guy I bought this place from wouldn't sell it to me unless I swore I wouldn't change the name. So I didn't. Funny thing was, his name wasn't Zeke either. Maybe I'll have another look around in here. Take your time. I've got the right idea. Kidding. Ew, PU. This might come in handy. And she's back! What's up with all those bottles of weird stuff over there? Who do something some of the more superstitious people around here practice? They think if you mix certain herbs and roots a certain way and drink them, or carry special objects around in little mojo bags, it can give you a supernatural edge in your daily life. Does it work? All I can tell you is... The stuff I got in here sells like hotcakes. Somebody thinks it works, so hey, who knows? I'm gonna keep browsing if that's okay. You got a question, just holler. should do it. Um, Lamont, could you help me? Sure, what do you need? Um, I can't quite reach that bottle up there. Could you get it for me? Sure.
Something. What do you need? No spray. Back room. No spray. Back room. Got it. Cute dog. This is weird. I better call Nancy and read this to her word for word. Wow, Bess, that is weird. No, I'll tell you what's weird. The box the letter is in is padded, and it has this round indentation in it that's the exact size of a human skull. It's like it used to contain a skull, but now it doesn't. Did you find anything else? Yeah, inside the box that this box is in, there's a couple of photographs. One's of a boy and a dog, and the other is of an iguana dressed up like a pirate. What? And there's a costume in the box of a skeleton man. Really? And did I mention that Lamont was very reluctant to talk about buying this box of stuff from Henry? Said he didn't want to get anyone in trouble, whatever that means. Sounds like he or Henry, or possibly both, are up to something they shouldn't be. Good job, Bess. I'm gonna poke around here and see if I can find out anything about a skull called the Whisperer. You better go take care of Lamont. Would you believe it? The guy is still sneezing. He must keep nose spray around because something's wrong with his sinuses. Oh, he's gonna hate me. Due to current weather and road conditions, cab service to the greater New Orleans area has been temporarily suspended. We regret being unable to serve you at this time. Uncle Bruno's pet iguana, Iggy. He's always in here stealing paper. He must be using it to build a nest or something. Look, I had all those books arranged so they fit perfectly in that box. Put them back in, okay? I don't have time. I just want to look through this one book. Go right ahead. After you put all those other books back.
My name's Nancy Drew. Is this Professor Hotchkiss? I am she. Nancy Drew, your name has a ring to it. Do I know you? Yes, as a matter of fact, we met a little while back in Wisconsin. <gasps> oh, yes! You were the delightful young lady doling out the samples in the tasting room of that cheese factory. Yum, yum! Uh, no, I met you at Whitford Castle. That's ridiculous. There was no cheese tasting room at Whitford Castle. No, no, we were both guests there. I found a journal written by Marie Antoinette, which you translated. Remember? Thanks to you, suddenly all I can think about is how wonderful a nice big slab of Colby cheese would taste right now. Listen, Mandy, I'm on a deadline, so if you could please just tell me why you called. But my name is... Deadline! Let's cut to the chase, shall we? Chop, chop. Did a man from New Orleans named Bruno Bollet ever call you? Ah, now there's a name you can remember. Bollet, nice and French. I'm a scholar of French history, you know. Yes, I know. So did Bruno Bollet call you? Indeed he did. Oui, oui. Why did he call, if you don't mind my asking? Because he had read my book, of course. The Crystal Skulls. Fact or fable, one of my best efforts. Sold like hotcakes smothered in a rich, tangy lemon sauce. Do you remember what you talked about? If memory serves, we talked mostly about the skull called the Whisperer. He wanted to know if I had learned any more about it since my book was published, which I hadn't, or if I had any theory as to what happened to it, which I didn't. And that was the extent of your conversation? Well, now, let me think. My, my, such insatiable curiosity, Nellie. You remind me of someone I encountered on one of my journeys. But for the life of me, I cannot remember her name or the circumstances. Nancy Drew, Wickford Castle? Ah, the eyes have it. I'm sorry? That's what Bruno Bollet said when I turned the tables and asked him if he had any idea where the Whisperer was. He said, the eyes have it. Then he chuckled and hung up. How much would a crystal skull like the Whisperer be worth? In this crazy day and age? Where the shorn hair and used tissues of celebrities get sold for thousands of dollars, there's absolutely no telling, Candy. A half million dollars easily. Maybe even a million. Maybe two. Maybe ten. The sky's the limit. Cha-ching, cha-ching. If someone found a skull made of crystal, how could they be sure it's one of the crystal skulls? Wonderful question, Francie. How indeed. Because there are sure to be thousands of fakes out there. Perhaps tens of thousands. But remember, the real skulls were made long before the tools commonly used for carving today were invented. Which means... Let's put on our thinking caps. Modern day tools would have left marks if the skull was a fake? Exactly so. Mind you, the marks on a good fake would be microscopic and thus imperceptible to the human eye. However, any thorough laboratory analysis would quickly unmask a counterfeit. So the only way to prove that a skull is the real deal is by proving it's not a fake? And by examining its provenance, its history of ownership. If it can be shown that a particular specimen has been passed along from antiquity into modern times and didn't just suddenly appear in, say, Germany in the mid-19th century, that would tend to support its authenticity as well. The idea that the Whisperer can make its owner immortal, do you believe that? I believe that things that defy any so-called rational explanations happen all the time, Nessie. Now, does that mean there are mysterious external forces at work in the universe of which we do not and cannot ever have full knowledge? Or does it all boil down to us? If the human heart desperately wants something to be true, does the human mind have the power to make it true? Who knows? Oh, questions, questions, questions. Oh, how dreary life would be without them. In your book, you said that all the people who've ever owned the Whisperer were murdered, yet Bruno Bollet dropped dead of a heart attack. Are you saying the Whisperer was in his possession after all? The scallywag! Why didn't he tell me that? 
Oh, that's right. I would have hung up on him. Well, if that's the case, then I strongly suggest you take a close look at his so-called heart attack, Sandy. Because if he owned the skull and he died, I guarantee you it was at the hands of someone else. Or oh, my name's not Beatrice Gertrude Winifred Hotchkiss. That's it for now. Rock and roll! Yes? I'm afraid you're going to be stuck with me for a while. Let me guess. Because of the big storm that's blowing in. Everyone in the city's freaking out and you can't get a cab. You're one heck of a guesser. Person at the bank told me. Just before she put me on hold for two hours. Ah, oh, don't worry. We've got plenty of food here. Beds, candles. You're welcome to stay. How did Bruno die, if you don't mind my asking? Just dropped dead in the front hallway. I mean, the guy was 95 years old. Here, check it out. Myocardial infarction. That's doctor speak for heart attack. Attending physician, Dr. Gilbert Buford, 504-555-9970. Was that Bruno's doctor? And his best friend, or so I'm told. I've never met him. Interesting keychain. That's one of Uncle Bruno's glass eyes. It's the one he was wearing when he died. How nice. Anything else? I'll let you get back to work. Sounds good. This is Dr. Gilbert Buford's answering service. How may I help you? I need to talk to Dr. Buford. Could you maybe give me a number where I can reach him? No, ma'am, I cannot. Is this an emergency? Sort of. I mean, it's not a medical emergency. I just... See, I'm only going to be in town for a short time, and Dr. Buford and I have this mutual friend who died recently, and I just really need to talk to him about it. Need some consoling, huh? Yes, I need some consoling. That's it exactly. Well, tell you what. It's against the rules to give you his phone number, but I can tell you that now that he's all but retired, Dr. Buford spends most of his evenings at his favorite gumbo stand down in the French Quarter. If you really need to talk to him, you can probably find him there. Great. Do you know the address? It's at the corner of Rampart and Domain. Did you say Rampart and Domain? I did indeed. Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cooking. They make some darn fine gumbo. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and uh, I'm truly sorry about your loss. My loss? That mutual friend of yours and Dr. Buford's. Oh, right. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Bye. Hello? Hi, Bess. It's me. So what's been happening? Tell me everything. Well, let's see. Since the last time we talked, I was just about getting ready to... Interesting stuff. But the reason I called is, I need you to talk to this doctor named Gilbert Buford, who, as it turns out, likes to hang out at a gumbo stand called Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cooking, which should be right across from our hotel. You just want me to talk to him? That's it? Nothing nefarious? No black ops stuff? He was Bruno Bollet's doctor, and apparently his best friend, too. I just need for you to see if he thinks there was anything weird about the way Bruno died. What do you mean by weird? I mean, I kind of think maybe Bruno was murdered. Murdered? By whom? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Everyone's a suspect at this point. Including this Gilbert Buford guy? Well... Great, I'm going to be chatting up Jack the Ripper. Oh, I'm sure the guy's fine, but... Be subtle, just in case. Well, I can see the gumbo stand from our balcony. If he's the guy that's sitting down there, I guess he looks harmless. Okay, I'll go talk to him. Thanks, Beth. Let me know what happens. Cheerio! Why, hello, young lady. How kind of you to grace an old man with your lovely presence. Are you Dr. Gilbert Buford? I'm delighted to report that I am indeed. Your answering service said I'd probably find you here. 
This here is my favorite spot in the whole city. Delicious gumbo, pleasing view, particularly now, I might add. <laughs> my name's Bess Marvin. I'd like to ask you some questions about Bruno Bollet, if that's okay? I'd prefer subject matter of a happier nature, but I do not want to seem inhospitable, so what is it you want to know? Is it true that Dr. Bollet was your best friend? Well, now, I was certainly his best friend, but I cannot honestly say that he was mine. Fact is, while socializing with my fellow man, particularly with pretty young women such as yourself, has always been a source of pleasure for me. Bruno was just the opposite. Unfortunately, the older he got, the more numerous his idiosyncrasies became, and the less concerned about their negative effect upon others he became. His idiosyncrasies didn't bother you? Now, as a doctor of medicine, I am not only accustomed to dealing with the abnormal, but I find that I am actually drawn to it. I, for one, thoroughly enjoyed Bruno's outlandish personality. Although, at the same time, I fear it may have played a role in his demise. You see, he died of a myocardial infarction, most likely caused by age-related atherosclerosis. Dying of a heart attack is all too common for people who are socially isolated, and Bruno Bole had most certainly become that. Did they do an autopsy on Dr. Bole? No. Given Bruno's advanced age and the absence of any indication of foul play, an autopsy was deemed unnecessary, and the body was cremated according to Bruno's wishes. Where was Dr. Bole when he had his M.I.? In the foyer of his house, just inside the front door. In fact, I hadn't seen him for a while, so I picked that day to pay him a visit. I walked up to the front door, found it unlocked as usual, opened it, and there he was, lying on the floor in obvious distress. The next thing I know, his housekeeper came running in and started shrieking and carrying on, until finally I sent her out of the room so she could summon an ambulance, and I could once again hear myself think. Then I... Well, let's see. Then I knelt down and saw that he wasn't breathing. So I pulled him away from the doorway so I'd have more room to work on him and began chest compressions. I continued until the medics arrived, but nothing they did made a difference either. Was Dr. Bollet unconscious the whole time? Uh, yes, he was. Can you remember anything that might indicate what he was doing by the front door? I mean, had he just come in from a walk? Was he wearing a hat? Was he holding anything? Had he dropped something? An umbrella? Sunglasses? Wait a minute. Why, yes. Yes, he was holding something. A piece of paper. And on the floor next to him was an envelope. He must have collapsed while reading a letter. Do you know what happened to it? Now, I know the letter was no longer in Bruno's hand when the paramedics arrived, so perhaps he released the letter when I moved him. And yet, I do not recall seeing it on the floor when they wheeled him out the door. Iggy. What's Icky? Iggy. Iggy is an iguana Bruno befriended, then turned loose in his home. It soon developed the annoying habit of stealing paper and stockpiling it in the vent system. Are you saying an iguana made off with the letter Bruno had been reading? It would not have been the first time a missing document ended up in Iggy's possession. Rene would periodically call me saying the lizard had absconded with one of Bruno's prescriptions and would I please write her up a replacement. In any case, Bruno once told me he was training Iggy. Said he taught Iggy to retrieve the things it had stolen. Do you think it's possible that Rene caused Dr. Bollet's death by, say, hoarding the pills from those missing prescriptions and giving them to him all at once? No. Had he died of an overdose of the medications I had prescribed, the manner of his death would have been quite different. But he died of a heart attack. Of that, I am certain. However, I know for a fact that Rene is deeply involved in the practice of hoodoo. And as Bruno's housekeeper, she had ample opportunity to use it against my poor old friend. You mean hoodoo really works? Young lady, never, ever underestimate the power of suggestion. 
If a person believes in something, even on a subconscious level, fantasy can easily become fact. And who knows what rubbish Rene filled Bruno's mind with? Drink this, don't eat that, this brings good luck, that brings bad, day in and day out. Even if he said he didn't believe a word of it, who knows how much his subconscious was absorbing. He was very old and vulnerable. So could Rene have caused Bruno to have that fatal heart attack? There's not a doubt in my mind she could indeed. Did Dr. Bollet ever say anything to you about owning a crystal skull? Why, yes. Yes, he did. In fact, he showed it to me once. Said it had magical powers. Said owning it was going to allow him to live forever. I thought it was utter nonsense and told him so. Well, he didn't appreciate that at all. Refused to talk to me for a full two weeks. Do you have any idea where he kept it? No. He was terrified that someone would steal it from him, so he told no one its location. Not even me. Tell me, Miss Bess, what do you know about that crystal skull? This friend of mine, who is also a friend of Henry Bollet, you know, Dr. Bollet's great nephew, Anyway, while she was visiting Henry, she saw this book in Bruno's library about the legendary crystal skulls and was kind of intrigued and thought that since Henry said that you were pretty much Bruno's only friend, maybe Bruno had said something to you about it. And as it turns out, he had. That's all I know. I see. Well, much as I'd like to believe that skull holds the key to immortality, I'm afraid Bruno's passing proves it's worthless. Although it would make an attractive paperweight, as I recall. Tell your friend not to give it another thought. I've bugged you enough. It's been a pleasure, I assure you. Hello? Hi, Nance. Okay, here's what's been happening at my end. And that's pretty much it. Good work. I'll take it from here. Thanks again. Good luck. Bye.
Can't check that off yet. Check. All done. All done. I haven't done that. All done. Check. Check. Did that. Did that. Did that. Still have to do that. Still have to do that. Did that. All done. Check. Did that. All done. Did that. Check. Did that. All done. All done. Did that. Can't check that off yet.
gotcha. Gotcha. May 31st? That's today. There must be another way out. This must be where I'm supposed to put all the glass eyes I've found. Let's see how we're doing.
Here, Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. Iggy, come here, Iggy. Got something for ya.
the librarian's tail. Hmm, something Bruno Bollet wrote in that Tired Eyes book mentioned the librarian's eye. Here we go, a librarian's tale. Yes? Do you think I could borrow your keychain? The one that has Bruno's glass eye on it? You want to borrow it? What for? Actually, all I really want is the eye. I mean, it's just so cool. What if you break it? I won't. I'll be really careful, I promise. I don't think I want to take that chance. Sorry. The box of your great uncle's things that you sold to Zeke's curio shop, that was a no-no, wasn't it? What box of things? I don't know what you're talking about. I checked out that half-burned receipt from Zeke's that I found in the fireplace. Well, somebody screwed up somewhere because I haven't sold anything to anybody. Why would I sell one lousy box of stuff when I'm about to inherit a whole house full of stuff? Get real. You sold it because you needed some quick cash in order to keep Summer happy, didn't you? How do you know about her? Playing detective is actually a lot more than a hobby with me. I could make a lot of trouble for you, Henry. But if you come clean, tell me about Summer. She's this girl I'm in love with. I think she loves me back, but she's so unpredictable it drives me nuts. How is she unpredictable? I never know what's gonna make her happy. Like, just before I left, I took practically every bit of cash I had and bought her a bunch of CDs. You know, to keep her occupied while I was gone, right? Well, soon as I get here, she calls and says her sound system just went bluey, and I had to buy her a new one, because what good were the CDs I bought her if she couldn't play them? So then I... So then you threw a bunch of Bruno's things into a box and sold it to that curio shop. Yeah. I wired her the money, but then she called and said she also needed new headphones. Next call, it was new speakers, and now she expects me to buy her a flat-screen TV. When I try to talk to her about always wanting more like that, she gets really mad. But I'm afraid if I don't give her what she wants, she'll... I'm afraid she'll dump me. And I couldn't take that. I mean, she's the only girlfriend I've ever had. Ever will have, probably. Look, you don't need to go telling Renee or any of those lawyers about selling that stuff, right? I guess I could just forget all about it. Especially if you were to, say, do something for me. I know. You still want the glass eye? Take it. Go ahead. It's all yours. You want something, I want something, take it and we're even, okay? Well, it's not like you sold off half the estate or anything. Three hundred bucks! That's all I've gotten out of his estate, I swear. Go on, take it. I was naughty, but from now on I'll be nice, I promise. Do you know anything about the crystal skull that was in that box of junk you sold to Zeke's? There wasn't any crystal skull in that box. Are you sure? It would have been inside another box. Well, I did throw in some smaller boxes. Like I said, I was just grabbing stuff. Was it valuable? All I really know for sure right now is that it's missing. Great. Be just my luck to have sold something that wasn't junk to that glorified trash collector. I'll check back with you later. Groovy. That was fast. I'll check back with you later. Groovy.
Did that. All done. Check. Did that. I haven't done that. Hello again. Did Dr. Bolet ever say anything to you about a crystal skull? He may have referred to it as the Whisperer. No, he never so much as mentioned a crystal skull, whispering or otherwise. Were you in the house when Dr. Bolet passed away? I was indeed. I was in the library cleaning when all of a sudden I heard a big thump. I hurried out to investigate and sure enough, there was Dr. Bolet lying by the front door. And as I rushed over to him, the door opened and in walked Gilbert Buford. He took one look at Dr. Bolet and hollered at me to call 911. So I ran back into the library and did just that. When I came back out, Gilbert was leaning over Dr. Bolet, listening for breathing, I suppose. And then he started pushing up and down on his chest. But it was too late. Even I could tell that Dr. Bolet was gone. How was it that Gilbert was able to just walk right in like that? As you yourself discovered, people around here seldom lock their front doors during the day. But you know, in the back of my mind, I have always wondered about Gilbert Buford showing up at the door at that exact moment. I understand that Dr. Bollet had some interesting pets, like an iguana. That man never met a creature he didn't like. He trained them to do all kinds of silly tricks, then let them run free inside the house as well as out. Do you know how he went about training them? I surely do not. Don't get me wrong. I like Dr. Bollet. I truly did. But I swear, sometimes his activities made as much sense to me as bathing in a bayou full of gators. That shovel over there with the interesting handle, do you think I could borrow it? Dr. Bollet took great interest in that shovel. Don't know why. He never used it. Just like to see it hanging there. Me, I use it to dig up roots. You mean like tree roots? No, I mean roots like tannus, black cohosh, valerian. Roots that in the right hands are very special, very powerful. However, right now I need mushrooms. I was hoping to get them picked tonight, but from the looks of all this potting I still have to do. What do you need mushrooms for? Dried and crushed, they comprise the main ingredients in one of my tonics. Tell you what, I need five painted conks. They're mushrooms that have got a short, fat stem and a large, bell-shaped cap covered with big red dots. You might find one or two here in the garden, but you'll have better luck in the boggy part of the cemetery. You get me five, no more, no less, and I'll let you borrow that shovel. Deal. You can put them in this bag. How else may I be of service to you? I'll see you later. Come see me any time.
Another painted conch. Yes! That looks like the right name.
That's gotta be it. Looks like the right name. There, I'm no dummy.
that looks like the right name. Let's hope Neil is lying down by now. Bingo.
Smells right to me. Hopefully this will givens me a clue. Hi, Bess. How you doing? Great. I just took a nice, luxurious bubble bath and I'm ready to boogie. When are you coming back here? That's still kind of hard to say, but listen. Remember that old photo of a boy and his dog you said you saw in that box of stuff Henry sold to Lamont? Yeah. Did it look like it was maybe taken in the 1920s? That's exactly what it looked like. Why? Because I need to find out the name of Bruno Bollet's dog. And if that boy was Bruno, then that was probably his dog. Was there any writing on the picture? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think it said Bruno. That's all it said? Just Bruno? No, it, it said Bruno and, but whatever came after and was hidden by the frame. I really need to know the name of that dog. Oh, no. No, you don't. No more snooping. Uh-uh. Best just get into that box again and see if the dog's name is on that picture. That's all I want you to do. How? I can't just go waltzing into Lamont's back room. And he's for sure as heck not going to fall for that sneeze contraption again. There must be some other way you can distract him. Please, Bess, I can't tell you how important this is. You've got to do this for me. Please? Okay. We're not going to have any fun here until you solve this mystery, and since you can't do that until I do this... Okay, I'll sneak into the back room and take another look at that photo. I mean, I will if I don't screw up. Think positive, Beth. You're gonna do fine. You bet I am. In fact, I'm not going to call you again until I have seen that picture. I'm going in. You go, girl. Hey! 
In all your journeys through the wonderful world of junk, have you ever come across one of those legendary crystal skulls? What makes you ask that? You have so many other oddities in here, I was just wondering. No. I know the legend, of course, and I sure wouldn't mind getting my hands on one of those babies. I mean, I could sell it for a fortune. But no such luck. Funny. I've been thinking about those skulls lately. A lot. Really? Hey, maybe we got some kind of psychic thing going here. Quick, think of a number between 1 and 10 and I'll try to guess it. You thinking of a number? Okay, uh, 4. 9. Darn. Guess it was just a coincidence. Guess so. There's a man sitting at the gumbo stand outside named Gilbert Buford. Do you know him? We're not close personal friends or anything, but I certainly know of him. Comes from one of the wealthiest and most prominent families in New Orleans. And on top of all that, he's a doctor. Guy's gotta be rolling in dough. Must be nice, huh? That gumbo stand outside? What do you think? Is it pretty authentic? Outstanding! Just watch the hot sauce. Whatever's in it gives my stomach instant fits. You know, I still feel guilty about that sneezing thing, so how about I go and get you a nice big bowl of gumbo? Just so happens I'm starving, so hey, you got a deal. Great. I'll be right back. What looks good to you? There you go. Woo, that was hot. Can I get a gumbo to go, please? Enjoy. Yes, ma'am. I hear that you're a member of the Jolly Rogers crew. Is that true? Perhaps I am. Perhaps I am not. I'm sure someone as charming and attractive as yourself has her share of secrets, too. Am I right? <laughs> Be that as it may, just what is a crew? Crews are organizations whose primary purpose is to put on parades during Mardi Gras. They also put on fabulous parties. Very private parties. Members only. Some consider crews to be private clubs. Secret societies is a term others have used. However, back in the 1990s, the city decided not to issue the Jolly Rogers any more parade permits, unless they opened their crew to pretty much anyone who wanted to join. So refusing to be blackmailed, they chose instead to simply not put on parades anymore. As far as the city is concerned, the Jolly Rogers no longer exist. Was Bruno Bollet a Jolly Roger, too? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Guess I'll be running along. Good night. That my gumbo? There you go. Enjoy. Mmm. Mmm. Uh-oh. Oh, you're gonna have to excuse me. Uh-oh. I better get out of here. Grant? The dog's name was Grant? That's what it said on the photo. Kind of a weird name for a dog, huh? Yeah, well, Bruno Bollet was kind of a weird guy. Hey, thanks a lot, Bess. You've been a huge help. I'll tell you, being sneaky takes a lot out of me. I'm exhausted. I still don't know when I'll get back there, so just kind of hang loose, okay? Story of my life. Call me if you need me. I will. Bye.
Yes? Did you know that Bruno was a member of a group called the Jolly Rogers? No. Should I care? Maybe not, but I care. They apparently ran around wearing Skeleton Man costumes. Don't know anything about it, sorry. I'll stop bugging you now. Groovy. Did you pick me those mushrooms yet? Sure did. Well, bless your heart, you did it. Actually, picking the one growing on the log sticking out of the swamp was a little hairy. Oh, my. I forgot to warn you about Bernie, didn't I? If by Bernie you mean the alligator that almost had me for dinner, yeah, you did. He's another one of Dr. Bolet's pets. He'd kick that log to get Bernie's attention, then feed him marshmallows. Problem is... Now that gator leaps up and snaps every time someone so much as touches that log. I should have said something, but I've gotten so used to Bernie, I just plain forgot. Anyway, feel free to help yourself to that shovel. You earned it. I'd better get going. Fare the well.
Iggy, how about a nice juicy loquat? Hey, Bess, what's going on? Nothing much. Just relaxing out here on the veranda. Are you done there? Not even close. Well, get a move on, or I might have to go shopping again. I'll try. See ya. Hey, what'll it be? Like Dr. Buford decided he's had enough gumbo. He's not at Granny Pumpkins anymore? Nope. But here's what else I've learned since I talked to you last. And that's all she wrote. Excellent. Thanks for the report. Stay in touch. See ya. Bess, listen, you busy? Uh, why? I need you to do something for me. What? I need you to infiltrate the meeting of the Jolly Rogers crew that's about to be held at Rampart and Dumain, which has got to be right near Zeke's. You're going to have to look around for it. Now, to get into the meeting, you'll need to put on that skeleton man costume you saw in the back room. And once you're in the meeting, you'll need to listen for the name that opens the meeting so you can tell me what it is, okay? No. Bess, I know you don't like to do stuff like this, but this is really, really, really important, and it'll be the last thing I ask you to do. I promise. Absolutely, unequivocally, irrefutably, incontrovertibly, no. 
Which of course actually means yes, because if I don't do this, I'll be stuck here by myself until you give up. And since we both know you will never give up, I don't suppose it would do any good to point out that the curio shop is closed? You'll find a way in. Oh, and if anyone at the meeting asks, the password is Scuttled Bones. Okay, I'll give it a shot. That's the spirit. What's the password? Password? Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, scuttled bones. Better hurry, we're just about to start. Fellow Jolly Rogers, know that we have several pressing matters to discuss this evening, so let us begin. As you may or may not have heard, certain city officials are attempting to deny us the right not only to gather in public places during the Mardi Gras season, but they have also seen fit to... Shoot, I forgot to turn off my cell phone! It seems we have an uninvited guest. Get him! <gasps> Let go! You're making a big mistake! Let go of me! Look, I'm not here to make trouble. You're making a, a big deal out of nothing. Can we just talk about this? Where are you taking me? If you just let me explain. Why, it seems our trespasser is of the female variety. Let's have a look. <gasps> That's right. You know me and I know you, Dr. Buford. And I also know that you were the one who attacked my friend over at the Bole Mansion today. And if you don't tell me why right now, I promise you, you are going to be in one big world of hurt. The young lady's clearly upset about something. Clarence, take over the meeting while I try to find out why she's making all these crazy accusations. They're not crazy and you know it! I will tell you everything, Miss Marvin, in private. And he did! He told me everything, Nancy! I bluffed him into confessing! You would have been so proud of me! Oh, and before I forget, the name they chanted at the start of the meeting was Jean Lafitte. Jean Lafitte. Great. Now, what did Dr. Buford tell you? Okay. First off, he said that with his dying breath, Bruno Bollet directed him to steal the painting of Henry's parents and lock it up in Henry's parents' crypt. Bruno seemed to think that way Henry would wind up with the crystal skull instead of somebody else. So Dr. Buford dressed up in his skeleton man costume, stole the canvas, and hid it in the crypt like Bruno asked. That must have been when Renee saw Mr. Death. But then, Dr. Buford had second thoughts and decided to hack with Henry. He wanted that crystal skull for himself. 
So this afternoon, he dressed up in his skeleton man costume again and snuck into Henry's house so he could get the key from that mini cemetery and retrieve the painting he'd left in that crypt, knowing the painting would somehow lead him to the skull. Only I walked in on him and ruined everything. Right. And now that we're on to him, he says he no longer wants the skull. He's embarrassed that he allowed his superstitious side to get the best of him and says whoever finds the skull is welcome to it. At least that's what Dr. Buford said. Uh-oh. Uh-oh what? I told him you were looking for the skull. That's all right. Actually, I told him you were on the verge of finding it. Why would you tell him that? I don't know. I got carried away. So if he lied to me, and he really does still want the skull, then he might come after you. He left right after we talked, and I don't think he went back into that meeting. What if he's on his way over there? Don't worry, I'll be fine. Why don't you just... Whoa, that bolt of lightning was huge. Anyway, why don't you just go relax, and I'll be back at the hotel before you know it, okay? Bess? Hello? Bess, you there? Nope, she sure isn't. Juicy loquat.
Yeah? Is this Milo Research and Technology? This is Chaz, Milo. Service forwarded your call to my cell. What do you want? Are you all right? I'm at the gym. On the treadmill. It's called multitasking. Well, about the letter you sent to Dr. Boulay, you know, where you told him the skull was a fake? I was just wondering... I never told him that. Never told him what? I told him that skull was authentic. No, you said in the letter the skull was carved using modern instruments. I said all the tests I ran proved the skull had been hand-carved and hand-polished. Probably took decades to make. But the letter Dr. Bollet got said just the opposite. Then the letter he got must not have been the letter that I wrote. I Are you saying the crystal skull is real? Hey, I'm not saying it's magic or anything. I'm just saying it wasn't made using 19th century, 20th century, or 21st century technology. Did you carbon date it to see how old it was? The thing was pure quartz. No carbon in quartz. No carbon, no carbon dating. Hey, look, I'm going to hang up now. If I try to talk anymore, I'm going to pass out. Just one more question. Did you send that letter saying the skull was authentic to anyone else? No, just Dr. Bollet. I heard he died recently. Good thing I build him up front. Yeah, well, thanks for your help. No problem. Hello again. I think I found the letter that Dr. Bollet was reading when he had his fatal heart attack. Iggy the Iguana had taken it. Apparently, Dr. Bollet did have a crystal skull and believed possessing it would make him immortal. So he had it tested, and the lab sent him its findings in this letter. Read the second paragraph. My analysis showed that the skull, while made of remarkably pure crystal, was carved using modern instruments. In layman's terms, the skull is a fake. My guess is Dr. Bollet believed in the skull so completely that when he read it was a fake, he was totally devastated and his heart just stopped. But what I don't quite understand is, why did you tell me you didn't know about the crystal skull when this letter indicates you did? All right. Dr. Bollet told me about the skull. As you said, he believed with all his might owning that skull was the reason he was still going strong at 95. I lied to you because, well, for one thing, Dr. Bollet swore me to secrecy. And for another, he kept the skull hidden. And up until just this minute, I wanted to be the one who found it. What made Dr. Bollet decide to have the skull authenticated? Getting the skull tested was my idea. When Dr. Bollet told me about it, I was skeptical and that troubled him. So I helped him find a private laboratory where we could take it, so any and all doubts would be dispelled once and for all. I certainly did not anticipate that the truth would result in his keeling over and dying like that. Well, now that I too know that the skull's a fake, I can stop fretting over its whereabouts. In fact, I should probably thank you and Iggy for setting me straight. Nice talking to you. Thanks for coming by.
that you in there? Goodness sakes, gal, what on earth have you gone and done? The lid's closing and I don't know how to stop it! Here, I'll pull you up. Toss what you're holding up here, then give me your hands. Come on, you best hurry! Here it comes! <sighs> Renee, a little help, please? The Crystal Skull. After all that scheming, how do I finally get it? Why, this nice little Yankee girl just hands it to me. Renee, help me! Hurry, please! Thank you, Nancy. Bye now. No! You've got to help me! Renee! Renee! Right there. That skull isn't yours. This ain't nothing of the fact that you just tried to bury me alive. The skull is mine. It wants to be mine. Yes, I did my share of scheming to get it. I got Dr. Bollet to go to the authenticators, then switched the letter they wrote saying it was real with one I wrote saying it was fake, in hopes that Dr. Bollet would just hand it over to me. Yes, my plan failed, and yet, here we are. I have the skull. Why? knows that I will fulfill its destiny. Bruno Bollet wanted Henry to have it. That's why he had Gilbert Buford steal that painting and hide it in Henry's parents' crypt. Because he hoped that way Henry would eventually find it. Henry is a fool. If he ever got his hands on this, he would just turn around and give it to that trashy girlfriend of his. Dr. Bollet, he just wanted it because he was terrified of dying. Gilbert Buford, too. And that Lamont fella, he just wants to sell it to the highest bidder. But me, my motives are pure. I am going to protect it so it can rendezvous with all those other skulls. I'm going to be right there when they start conversing and all the mysteries of the universe are forever solved. Renee burst into tears and sobbed as Bernie swam away with a crystal skull. It made me feel sorry for her for about two seconds. After all, while she may not have meant to cause Bruno's death, she certainly meant to cause mine when she left me sealed up in that crypt. It felt good to turn her over to the police. Later that night, Dr. Buford came over and apologized for knocking me out with that smoke bomb and for allowing himself to think, even for a moment, that Bruno's crystal skull was anything more than a pretty piece of quartz. To make up for his shameful behavior, he insisted on taking Bess and me on a grand tour of New Orleans. Seeing the city through the eyes of someone who loves it as much as Dr. Buford was truly special. He invited Henry too, but Henry declined. He was still trying to process the fact that his great uncle wanted him to have the skull. Henry always thought that to Bruno, he was nothing more than an annoying family obligation, someone Bruno couldn't care less about. 
Yet Bruno's request of Dr. Buford, made with his dying breath, proved that he did care about Henry. Apparently, and unfortunately for Henry, Bruno was the type of man who just couldn't bring himself to say such things out loud. As for Lamont, when he heard what happened, he closed his shop, bought enough marshmallows to fill a swamp boat, and has been scouring the bayous ever since kicking every log he comes to in hopes of finding Bernie and the crystal skull inside him. But Bernie has yet to turn up. Maybe the skull didn't agree with him. Maybe swallowing it caused him to stop associating the sound of a kicked log with yummy sweet things. In any case, the whisperer has disappeared, lost to the world once again, which is totally fine by me. Talk about a detective's dream come true. The Italian police called me personally and requested that I travel to Italy and help them stake out a suspected thief in Venice. Unfortunately, what started out as a simple assignment in a city filled with canals, gondolas, and romance quickly morphed into a full-fledged undercover operation, and I soon found myself trapped in a maze of lies, disguises, and danger. Help me find my way out by joining me in my next adventure. Phantom of Venice.